Testing, one, two, three. Testing, testing, is my audio gone down? Yes, okay, you guys should be good now. Good now? Yeah, so give, give Richard a control again, so you can hear that. Oh, nobody heard that. <laughs> well, you just stay on the screen. <laughs> but um, I actually was speaking with Richard over the weekend for all the category winners and the grand champion, and I said to Richard, it's daylight savings in the US. That means you have to get out of bed on Tuesday for the announcement, because it's not 4 a.m. in the morning, it's more like 7 in the morning. So welcome Richard Wood all the way from New Zealand. And if you do not know Richard, Richard is our head judge. He has run the awards and accreditation since it started in 2017. He's got 13 master judges um, in his team that go through all of these images, and he is very closely connected to all of them. So, hi Richard, how are you doing? Morning Sue, I'm good, thank you. <laughs> and they heard you. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna get started. I know that we've got some big videos to load up, so I'm going to uh, just talk you through it as I always do. The Portrait Masters Awards and Accreditation was something very close to my heart. It's actually how I met Richard in the probably 2007, I think it was. And Richard exploded into the New Zealand professional photography scene and just won, you know, champion print and he won all these accolades the very first year. And then he just continued to do so. And we've been friends ever since. So when I approached Richard and said, it's really important to me that, um, that the portrait system has an awards and accreditation because of how important it was for me and my growth as a photographer, um, then he was the first person that I reached out to. And another reason I reached out to Richard is he's not only um, an incredible photographer and artist, but he is a very good judge. And he is very good at coaching other judges. And yeah, he's still an award-winning photographer internationally to this day. And that is, just such an incredible thing because he's still doing it. The image you just posted on Instagram that you're now animating with the flame and what did that win this year? That beautiful image? Uh, that was that was 2020, I think, oh, that image. Um, it was, I think it was a 95, yeah. 95 it's gold distinction in New Zealand. Incredible image. I can't wait to see that printed. Yeah, it's just been done. It's being um, put in a gallery uh, on Friday, actually. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that up large. It's almost life size, so it's pretty cool. Fantastic, Richard. Do you want to speak to these three um, accreditations that we give out? We have our associate. The next level is portrait master, and then we go to fellow. Sure. So look, the at our first level associate. You know, that's an accumulation. Um, of, of five points and um, it's that's an acknowledgement that you're able and capable to um, to produce a professional level of work um, and then we go on to our, our master uh, which is an accumulation of um, 50 points and that's that's that big step up so that's not only um, a professional standard um, Sorry, it wasn't five points for associate. Um, it was 25. And 50 is, it's it's like that next level. So it's not just professional standard. It's an, a, a really good professional standard. And um, you you need to have attained three silvers and an average of, um, average of tw uh, 73 over however many rounds um, your last 20 images sits in. So, so it's when a, you it's review the folio, mark. you actually review the entire body of work, even anything they entered that did not score. It's their entire body of work that they've entered throughout those years. Yeah, that's true. So, And, and naturally, we, we pay more attention to what you're doing now rather than what you did at the beginning. You know, you should be, um, it's, it's, it's more important sort of what you're doing recently. But yeah, and then, and obviously, from there, we have this huge jump, and we have our. This is a smaller set of people, which is our fellows, which is an incredible achievement, um, and that requires, you know, you, that's your ten silvers, so and and hundred points. So um, yeah, it's 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 good to keep having benchmarks in front of you consistently. And those silvers and golds are hard to get. Oh uh, yeah, they're pretty pretty difficult. <laughs> So we have some accredited photographers that we would like to announce. Now, the um, results have been published in your account for members if you want to go and look at your accreditation. 
So for members that are getting their accreditation today, you get to go on our map, which is great because we're getting to see accredited photographers all around the world. And I believe we had 6,766 entries this round. Everybody always asks, especially when they're in the top 20 because they like to know. And we have got bronze, silver, and gold merit. For those of you that don't know, the bronze merit scores between 70 and 79, the silver merit scores between 8 and 89, and the gold merit scores between nine and, uh, 90 and 100. Our golds are very hard to get, but when you get them, they're very impressive. Um, you can see on our website, or you can see here, the breakdown of all of them. And as Richard said, we want to make sure that there is a distinction between a high professional standard in the low 70s, and then that distinction of that sort of next level of professional standard in the 70s. That's why we sort of, we sort of score knowing that we're pulling you up into the high 70s if it's a very good professional standard, but it's not quite getting any magic for silver. Would you say the same for gold? Uh, for gold, yeah, gold, gold is when we get left breathless, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like that there's not a whole lot of golds. I like that when you do get the golds, it is that breathless moment where everybody's stopping and just feeling that, just feeling it instantly. Yeah, the, the gold is a sacred, I guess it's a, it's a sacred award on a print. Um, but they, and, and they definitely stand out from the rest. They deserve to be rare. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. All right. Your account, your results have been published and I'm going to introduce Ashley Taylor Henning to tell us more about you associates. Thanks, Sue. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Taylor and I'm a master accredited photographer with the Portrait Masters. I'm also a mentor in our community. I co-host with Kevin Conde the bonus Clubhouse edition episodes of the Portrait System podcast and I'm an instructor with two courses in the Portrait Masters store that teach you how to get more clients using Facebook ads and Instagram marketing. Getting my master level accreditation was a huge honor and it really helped me feel so much more confident and capable as a photographer. It helped me understand that I am producing work at a high level and really helped me own the prices that I charge my clients. And I am still on the journey right along with you as I am slowly but surely trying to make my way toward my fellow accreditation. So I know how exciting it is to work toward that next level and how exciting it feels to actually achieve it. And that's why I'm so proud of our new associates. As you know, getting your associate level accreditation is your first level of accreditation on this journey, and that's why I think it's actually one of the biggest accomplishments of them all. It's when you really start to realize that you are producing work at a consistent professional standard, and I think that that just helps you speak with confidence to your clients so much more, and you really realize that, yes, you are a photographer and you should own that proudly. So. I'm so proud of our new associates and I can't wait for Sue to read off those names of who is joining us with their associate accreditation. So without further ado, back to you. You are so cute, Ashley. I smiled through that whole thing. It was the same for me and it's not the same for everybody. And I know I explain this every single time, but you know what? It is an awards and an accreditation. So for our members, a lot of them are just simply going for their accreditation. They want that status. They want to earn it. They want to feel like they've earned it. They want to work their way through to master. And then they want to be able to show that for themselves and for their clients. It was a big deal for me. It made me feel like a professional. And it took away my imposter syndrome. That's exactly what it was and why I wanted it to be here. Unfortunately, it is an awards and an accreditation. The awards side of it, which is that going after those golds and going after those category wins, that's a whole different game. And also that's not for everybody, but it was definitely for me and it was definitely for Richard Wood. And we found so much joy 
in that space. And Richard, I think you still find so much joy in that space because you have never let it go. And I do have envy. Every year when I watch you produce your work, I'm like, why didn't I take the time out this year? It was that important for me. <laughs> yeah, it can be pretty addictive, that's for sure. I try and let it go sometimes, but it doesn't happen. And why, <laughs> back then, did you ever, were you ever focused on the accreditation part for yourself when you were growing, or were you just into that awards right from the beginning? Um, well, the, well, yeah, I mean, the accreditation back here in New Zealand is, is, was separate in some ways, but the masters and the associate and grandmasters, fellows, etc., were all attached to the award systems. So yeah, it was it was the smaller benchmarks and the building up from that is no, it was all, all combined. So it was that and the getting the bronzes and the silvers and and those elusive golds. It was all it was just it was trying from every angle. And it was a they were just really good goalposts to consistently have in front of you. And it just keeps you improving and pushing. So your you own never bounds. know who's going to be in your category. And you always pick your category being the strongest category. I always went for people portrait category because that was my genre. You never know who's going to be competing against you and you can get some players in the awards realm that go straight to the top. So I always knew that the only person I was competing with was myself. And I was really just competing for the highest score I could possibly get with that image because I knew it was pointless trying to compete with anybody else in that category because you never know what's in that category until you see the results. So that, to me, always made me feel like I was competing against myself. Yeah, exactly. I, I, and I remember back in 2011, I think I had a Sue Bryce in, in, in a category I was going for. So, yeah, that was hard work. <laughs> <laughs> He means I was judging a category that he was competing in and he said I annihilated one of his images. <laughs> and I would not have done that. I'm sure it wasn't a total annihilation. <laughs> That's why you're judging now and I'm not. Our, oh, well, let's just wait for those accredited photographers. I'm so sorry. I'm going to read your, your first names because <laughs> I'm not going to butcher your names, guys. And I know that you're looking in your account. So I have Andrew, Caitlin, Viviana, Christina, Diana, Diana, two Dianas, Kelly, Hannah, Christine, Thaddeus, Jeannie, Colette, Yodanka, Araka, Sarah, Shannon, Doherty, you, Shannon, Kelly, Williamson, oh, Kelly, awesome, Christine, Nicole, Annette, Melvin, Lorna, Saskia, Robin, Nitya, Lisa, Nicole, uh, Nicola, Susie, Michelle, Thomas, Jill, Kathy, Stacy, Nicole, Anna. Oh my gosh, there are so many names I know on this list. And Nikki Kirk. Sorry, I couldn't read all your names, guys. There's a lot there, but I know that you're going to look at your account. And congratulations for reaching the level of associate. You know, I talked a lot with Richard when we first made the awards, and I said, to me, the bronze level of high professional standard should really be that level of um, that standard that a professional studio is just turning out on a very regular basis. And it's just so wonderful to watch people go up and beyond that because that level is actually really hard to attain. And once you get there, now you're just focused on consistency and mastery and, you know, making it work in your business. So uh, we have some accredited masters to announce, and this is always absolutely exciting. Um, I'm just going to go straight in and announce this. Uh, did we have a video that was going to talk to masters that I just didn't get before that one? If we do, we'll throw to it. But if not, I want to give a shout out to our four masters that we are announcing this round. Alexandra Baltina. I know, Alexandra, you are currently... Um, in the Ukraine, in the middle of a war, achieving this incredible thing. And I want you to know that this is announced with all the love and support of where you are right now from all of your friends and fellow portrait masters. Uh, we have a new master, Lisa Jones. Congratulations, Lisa. Nina Peterson. Congratulations, Nina. And Lynette Smith, our four new masters. I'm just going to check and make sure we haven't got a little video for that. Okay, we're good. All right, this is, this is all me. Congratulations, Masters. I remember the day I got my Masters to this day. All right, we have 
no accredited fellows this round, um, which is fine because that is rare as hen's teeth and we know when we get them, there's only one or two, so that will wait for the next round. Category awards, here we go. Each winner will receive $1,000 each. Category winner gets a crystal trophy and $1,000 and the opportunity to be awarded grand champion. We look at all of the category winners and we judge the champion print. Okay, um, on top of winning your category, if you win grand champion, you get an added $1,500. So it's $2,500 to the winner of both of those trophies. Each category winner will also receive the opportunity to be featured on the Portrait System podcast, which just reached 1 million downloads because Nikki Klosser is awesome. And we also publish you in the Portrait Masters magazine. So you want to hear who the winners are? Oh, first I have to just talk about the categories for a sec. We've got the contemporary category still. It's always been our biggest category, right, right Richard? Um, contemporary has always been just packed full and it's such an incredible category to judge. We have newborn consistently high. We have children's portrait, always a great category, and pet portrait. We have the family group portrait. We have boudoir as its own category. We have creative portrait, which is more of fine art and sort of you know creative, illustrative, fantasy, composite. Then we have a challenge category every single round. And this round, our challenge category was cultures of the world. You'll see those top 20, that's very cool. We have maternity still, teen and senior, and movement. Movement was our challenge category that became our permanent category. And then we have wedding portraits. So this was our first wedding portraits and I'll, most of our masks, in fact, let me think. All of our masters are wedding photographers as well. Our judges. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Every single one of them are. So there you go. Highly qualified to judge that category as well. And now we're going to show the top 20 of each category. We're going to do something a little bit different. We always talk about the category winner and then show the top 20. This time we're going to go backwards from 20 and that number one is the category winner. Now, I'm going to introduce a really good friend of mine. You're going to meet some of our master judges today because we called them and said, hey, you guys need to record a video. People need to know who you are. I'm going to introduce one of the absolute best. He is a phenomenal photographer. He bought his he took over his father's portrait studio. He's been doing this all of his life. He is incredibly successful. He's an award-winning photographer and he's an amazing judge and his name is Ray Shembury. Thanks, Sue. Hello, everyone. My name is Ray Shembury from Sydney, Australia. I've been a professional photographer for over 40 years with a specialty in wedding and family portraiture. Entering the wards has been an important part of my growth as a person and a photographer. Those small steps in growth with the award system saw me win three Australian Professional Photographer of the Year and WPPI category titles. The Portrait Masters Awards is a fabulous platform to learn and grow as a photographer. I promise if you commit yourself, you will start to see the magic and the awards will reward you. Judging this year, I must say, I love all the portrait categories. Some entries are truly hypnotic and these images are such a great lesson of our craft and exceptional treatment, emotion and storytelling. Well, I have something special, the top 20, starting from 20 to number one. Sit back and let's sell some exceptional work. Richard, can we throw it to you, Richard, just for a sec before? You're going to see something about this creative portrait before we show those top 20. Oh, we're on to the creative, are we? Yes, yep, sure. this is going to be – Ray Ray <laughs> has just introduced the creative portrait, and I know that you definitely right. want to speak to that. Okay, so so speaking to the category, I mean, it's a it, – Creative category is a portrait that has a unique theme or, or style, as we as you said before, so fantasy or composite. Um, it's a, it's really a category to stretch boundaries of creativity, hence its name. Um, it's where imagination and and 
outside of the the expected photography can really flourish and um, it's truly a category that celebrates and welcomes innovation and difference and it's your basically category, for me it's, it? <laughs> oh yeah it's a, play, it's a playground where boundaries can be pushed so yep let's let's count down for the finalists and, and end with oh, this category so much. Uh, I, my next slide, one moment, is. And our winner of the creative category is Farah Yavari. Farah, this is not the first time you've won a category with us. You are exceptional. Your work is phenomenal and it is growing every single time I see it. Congratulations. This is a beautiful image and I spent a lot of time in it, <laughs> looking around it. It's truly, the detail is phenomenal, and I would love to see this in print. The next category we have is family and group portrait, and I've got Nikki Clother here to talk about this category. Thank you so much, Sue. Hi everyone, oh, I'm Nikki Klosser. I'm host of the Portrait System podcast and I've been a portrait photographer for 10 years now. Let's talk about the family and group category. So this category is when you have two or more family members and you're capturing their connection in your portraits. I love this category so much. We've got in studio, on location, outdoor, just some pose, yep. some candid, some beautiful composition, beautiful retouching. It's just- Let me talk. I'm going to make him restart that because we're looking at Nikki's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> we're having some video. Our video is being very interesting today. All right, restart that and we'll see if we can actually see her. <coughs> Sorry, Nikki. Oh, Farah, I hope that you're online, actually. I wondered if you were because uh, she in Sydney, Richard? Is Farah in Sydney or Melbourne? I don't know. Well, I, Australia, I know that, but yeah. I'm not sure. What, what oh, and city. it's great. Uh, all of you out there, I was realised, I was like, you're going to meet some masters. You're also going to hear a whole lot of Kiwi and Australian accents. <laughs> oh, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to Nikki, because there's a whole lot of people in the family category that want to know if they're in the top 20. Thank you so much, Sue. Hi, everyone. I'm Nikki Klosser. I'm host of the Portrait System podcast, and I've been a portrait photographer for 10 years now. Let's talk about the family and group category. So this category is when you have two or more family members and you're capturing their connection in your portraits. I love this category so much. We've got in studio, on location, outdoor, just some pose, some candid, some beautiful composition, beautiful retouching. It's just such a great way to showcase family members together, celebrating their connection. Okay, so we've created for you a brief slideshow and we put together the top 20 photos from each category. We're gonna show you the slideshow starting at number 20, all the way up to the winning photo for that particular category. All right, let's get started with the slideshows. Please enjoy and congrats to everyone who is in the top 20 for all of these different categories.
absolutely beautiful. What did you think of that, guys? Okay, just bring my award-winning print back up. <laughs> Nothing's working for me today. <laughs> oh, goodness. Just love these live moments. I do think um, Mercury is in retrograde. Maybe I'm wrong. Oh. Yay, we got it. <laughs> this is our champion print. I'm so sorry, Alicia Ho, for making you wait. Congratulations on being the winner of the family portrait category. This is such a beautiful connection in this image. It's absolutely beautiful. All right, our next category to announce is maternity. Who have I got here? Oh, I've got Bethany Joss. Introducing Bethany Joss to talk to you about the maternity category. Thanks, Sue. Here. Hi, everyone. My name is Bethany Jose, and I am a portrait and boudoir photographer based in West Fargo, North Dakota. I started my business in 2014, and I absolutely love connecting with women of all ages, shapes, and sizes. Helping these women see past her inner voice and watching their transformation through a photo shoot has not only changed their lives, but it's changed mine. In 2017, I started submitting my images to the Portrait Masters Awards and Accreditation, and I earned my fellow accreditation in September of 2019. Today, I am one of your Portrait Masters judges, and I am excited to announce the maternity category. This category is a portrait of one pregnant female or a depiction of a baby bump. We can't wait to share this round of submissions with you. They're mind blowing and you all continue to amaze me with your work. I love this category because it depicts motherhood in a beautiful and creative way. I'm so impressed with the level of mastery that you continue to submit in these categories. It just blows my mind. We're going to view a brief slideshow starting from 20 and ending with the winner of the maternity category. Are you ready to see who made it into the top 20? Okay, let's check it out. And congratulations to everyone who placed. Ooh, maternity. Let's get that video loaded. You know, this is actually one of my favorite categories to judge because it's actually one of the most beautiful categories. It's so phenomenal, this genre of maternity, how it's developed over the last 20 years. And now it's such a strong, a strong part of studios. Here is our top 20. for a beautiful category and our category winner is Alison Bounds. This image scored 88, Alison. I've done a little underwater photography in the last year and the level of difficulty in this image is beyond anything I can comprehend right now. So congratulations, this is a remarkable shot. Next category to announce is our newborn category. And I'm going to introduce you to, oh, do we have a newborn category? No, I think newborn might be on me and Richard. 
Richard, do you want to speak to the newborn category or would you like me to speak to the newborn category? I, you can speak to the newborn. I'll talk to, to, to children. You know what I want to say about newborn? Is <laughs> I come from a genre of glamour photography. Remember, that's how branded I was in the 80s. And then um, the big change to sort of make that contemporary portrait took me a long time to get rid of that word. Around the early 2000s, glamour was taking off again, reinvented. And that's when I met Kelly Brown. And she is one of my dearest friends. And um, when I met Kelly, it was 2009. And her newborn genre was really also taking off. But it was getting a lot of criticism. And you have to remember, Anne Geddes is a Kiwi. And she was in New Zealand when she created Anne Geddes. And, you know, there was a newborn in a flower pot or a flower all around the world. And she definitely started this genre. And then as portrait photographers started to do it, and develop businesses around it. They got a lot of criticism, just like Glamour. But I watched Kelly go through that criticism that, who wants to put a, a baby in a flower pot, Ugh, kind of criticism, just like Glamour got, you know, like, ooh, so 80s. But you just slowly just change people's perception of what you're doing by showing them the work. And I watched her grow over the last 20 years and because of, uh, over the last, sorry, 12 years, and because of that, um, I love this category. Newborn photography is an extraordinary skill and it's something I never, it's the only genre I don't do and never tried because, you know, that safety practice is beyond anything you, you should, you know, make sure that's your first priority. And it's really just an extraordinary genre in itself. So to celebrate all of the newborn photographers in portrait, here is your top 20. Congratulations, Stacey Robeson, congratulations. This is your beautiful image and you have won the newborn category. Well done. The next category we have is children's portrait. Uh, who do I have to introduce children's portrait? Ridgewood. <laughs> hey, you do beautiful children's portrait because you have a beautiful child and she is definitely your muse. Yeah, 13, just turned 13 now though, so time's flying. Teenager. But yeah, yeah. No, look, um, I love the children category. It's, um, this category is it's designed for children aged between, you know, 1 to 12, um, and their, their little faces can tell a thousand stories, so they're, they're very expressive beings, and as judges we love seeing a portrait that connects with a child and sort of gets down into their world and into their existence and shows us, like, really who they're about. And children, they've got this gift and even the smallest expression or eye contact can say so, so much. So it's definitely one of my favourite categories. It's just the um, small window of time you have to work with that magic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? Until the wheels fall off. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm very excited yeah. to see the top 20.
category winner to show you. There it is. Pamela Gagnon, congratulations. You are the winner of the children's portrait category. And this image is truly beautiful. I spend a lot of time in this image as well. It is masterful. Congratulations. The next top 20 we have is the contemporary category. And the contemporary category, as I said, is always the biggest category. It's an exciting category and it's always filled with lots of very cool imagery. Um, I have Peter Rossi and Charmaine Hayer to introduce this category. You're going to hear more Australian accents. These two are a couple that have an incredible portrait studio in Queensland, Australia. But, um, but Peter and, and Charmaine are amazing speakers. They're both um, incredible award-winning photographers in their own right. So I would love to introduce Peter and Charmaine. Thanks, Sue. I'm Peter Rossi. And I'm Charmaine Hire, and together we are Highlights Photography from Cairns, the top of Australia. It's a real honour for us to present the contemporary finalists. We both know what it's like entering photography awards. It's all about the excitement and, of course, the learning. We've been entering photography competitions now for 25 years and we still get excited about entering now and also judging probably for the last 15 years or so. Now, it's been a journey and like all journeys, it's had its highs and lows. Some of our highs have been winning the Australian Professional Photographer of the Year three times between us and 17 national category wins. As for the lows, well, maybe we don't need to talk about those <laughs> just here. We'll just put that down to learning experiences. We are very aware that for a picture, whether we're judging or entering, for a picture to score well, it really needs to have strong initial impact. One of the things we noticed this year with the entrants was seeing them being more adventurous with their posing, their lighting, their background choices and storytelling. So, let's have a look at the top. 20 contemporary finalists, starting with number 20 and ending with the winner. Well done, guys. Good luck. All the best. Oh, it just makes me homesick right about now. I'm seeing all these wonderful faces. I love that Peter and Charmaine are like, we've been entering photo competitions for 25 years. Yeah, photo competitions. Uh, again, three times Australian champion photographer of the year, grand winner, and 17 categories internationally around the world. They are phenomenal. Make sure you check out their work because it's really incredible. And we are going to show you the top 20 in contemporary. This is our winner of the contemporary category. It's her second category for this award. <laughs> Fari Bari. Gosh, that makes me want to cry. <laughs> this image scored 94 and it is superb. It is such a beautiful image, Var, and congratulations um, for your gold merit. This is absolutely beautiful. Um, the next top 20 we have is teen and senior portrait. This category has been strong right from the beginning. Uh, you know, the senior market is really big here and it's always dominated. Uh, lately, I've noticed in the last two years, it's gone up to an extra um, next level. So here to talk to you about teen. Do we have a teen introduction? I don't know if we do, let me check. 
and I just announced Ivan is the winner, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> Ivan, you've won this category, and I'm now going to show you the top 20 in reverse, but now you know at least you've won. <laughs> Beautiful category. Congratulations, Ivan. I love this image. It is so stunning. And when you get to the end of that gallery to see this one pop up is absolutely beautiful. Movement category um, became a thing, Richard, and it definitely is something people loved, right? They loved the movement. Movement's um, so big in photography. And um, what do you like the most about this being now regular? Oh, it's great. I mean, we had to make it regular because there were so many in that genre. But what I, it's it's almost like, uh, you know, often as portrait photographers, there's so much expression in the face. But this category also allows, or in, is is so focused on expression through movement, and and storytelling and narrative and, and emotion through that movement. So, it's it's quite an art form. This category, it's it's really interesting to judge. Awesome. I'm going to introduce you to one of our American master judges now. His name is Kevin Giraj, and he is an incredible photographer. Kevin actually is an amazing sports photographer. So check out his Instagram, and here's Kevin Giraj. Thanks, Sue. For you guys that don't know me, my name is Kevin Giraj, and I'm a sports, fashion, and portrait photographer out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, some of my clients include USA Today, uh, Panini America, and I'm also in charge of all the photography for the college football national championship game every year. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions for me, feel free Tell to reach out to no me video. on Instagram or Twitter or at Kevin Giraj on both. Uh, I've been judging competitions for quite a while now. In fact, I've got a triple master's from WPPI and a master's degree from PPA. Uh, the category I want to introduce today is called movement. Uh, this is a really cool category because it could be anything from dancing, uh, sports, it could be water, anything that just shows a little bit of movement. And we have some really cool and creative entries this time, uh, and I can't wait for you guys to see them. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, check out the top 20. And congratulations to all the winners. Awesome, thank you very much, Kevin. Um, we're just loading that video now, and we're going to watch the top 20 of the movement category. Uh, we Dance was always uh, something that was very big in portrait, and that's why movement was definitely a category that we'd looked at for a long time. We didn't want to just create a dance category, though, because movement in photography covers so many different genres and so many different styles to shoot. So. This is the top 20 in the movement category. Thank you. 
just get my champion print, uh, my category winner. And this is our category winner, Carolina Skorik. Congratulations. You are the winner of the movement category. Well done. Beautiful image. Um, I'd love to hear how you created this. All right, we have top 20 in the pet category, and let's face it, it's one of my favorite categories. It wasn't one of the first categories that we launched with, but it was in there by the second year, and it's always going to be one of the best, right? Um, here to talk to you about the pet category is pet photographer and judge Craig Turner Bullock from New Zealand. <laughs> Thanks Sue and thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Craig Turner Bullock. I'm based in Christchurch, New Zealand and I run a business called Furtography. If you can't tell from the name, I've been a pet specialist since 2001. That makes me feel very old, but hey, those 20 plus years have flown by and I've absolutely loved every minute of it. Uh, pets are my absolute passion and I've been really lucky over the years to enjoy some success with what I do as well, um, including having three best-selling books about dogs and cats. I've also won over a hundred awards for my images over the years, um, which includes having being the first person in New Zealand history to win the Portrait Photographer of the Year Award with pictures that are not people. And I'm really excited to be a Portrait Masters judge. This category is the pet category, of course, and I'm so impressed with all of the entries that I've seen and judged through this round. The images have got so much diversity in them. There is so much personality shining through in the work that I've seen and just filled with the joy that animals bring us in our everyday lives. So before I waffle on for too long, let's have a look at the top 20. We're gonna look at the slideshow ending in the category winner. Congratulations to everybody. Well done, awesome work. And let's take a look now. Oh, I'm just going to say quickly while we're loading that video, waffle on is <laughs> such a Kiwi thing to say. Um, you were not waffling on, Craig. I could listen to you all day. Ella, maybe you could put Craig's Instagram handle in the chat for people so that they know where to follow him and look at his phenomenal work because it really is awesome. Let's look at the top 20 in the pet category. is a beautiful category. Congratulations to Penny Sheshire. This image is absolutely beautiful, Penny. And you are the winner of the pet category. Congratulations to you. Perfect asymmetry with those little baby ears. <laughs> we have a top 20 in the boudoir portrait category. And to introduce this category is another American master judge, Alicia Savage. Um, I'm going to uh, let us tell you a little bit more about the boudoir category. No, I do not have Alicia here. Okay, Alicia is not going to introduce it, so I'm going to introduce it. The boudoir category has gained not only in strength and momentum in the last five years, it's actually become one of our strongest categories. As a genre, it's doing the biggest comeback right now. You know, boudoir has always come back. We, we say that I saw it come back in the 80s, I saw it come back in the early noughties, 
But boudoir is doing a big shift right now, and especially in the last five years. And if you really look at it, it's, it's turned a huge corner. There are so many different styles coming up in boudoir now, and they're really being identified as separate, almost separate inside that genre. It's become one of the most photography Google words for portrait photographers, even though most people can't say it or spell it. <laughs> and, you know, it's a difficult word. And it's really changed from being sort of classic boudoir, you know, that sort of bedroom scene and lace to open to just empowerment, editorial style, outdoor fashion style. And it's a really quite an incredible genre. And it's a really um, high demand portrait service now because people are asking for it. And when people are asking for it, we know that they want it. Let's have a look at the top 20 of the boudoir category, finishing with our category winner. And I'd like to say a big congratulations to the winner of the boudoir category is Martina Warrenfeld. And I must say, Martina, you absolutely, congratulations, you won this category. And that is a strong category to win. I loved every single one of those images. To all people that are in the top 20, congratulations to you. It's a thrill, isn't it? Especially when you're sitting there waiting, not knowing where you are in that category, and then suddenly your image and your name pops up and your heart's in your throat. I remember that feeling all too well. Our challenge category this round was Cultures of the World. Um, I really, we love coming up with challenge titles. We're on a group text and we like to all throw in, you know, group titles and what they mean. Cultures of the World was definitely a category I was excited to see and hear out the top 20. But before, I actually made Richard Wood record a video for you. And I'm going to play it because then I made him get out of bed for you. But I, he was like, oh, I already recorded you a video. And I said, like, no, you can get out of bed. But I'm going to play that video anyway because you say something really cool in here. So here is Richard Wood <laughs> to us, the top 20 of this category. Thanks, Sue. So, kia ora tato, ko tamata te monga, ko tukituka te awa, no heretonga aho, ko wood toko fano, ko Richard toko ingawa. Oh. Hello everyone, Tamata is my mountain, the sleeping giant, Toki Toki is my river. I live in Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, Wood is my family, my name is Richard. I'm the father of one, very soon to be the father of two. I'm your head judge here at the Portrait Masters Awards and Accreditation. I'm a Grand Master of the New Zealand Institute of Professional Photography, four-time winner of the New Zealand Photographer of the Year and a Grand Award winner at WPPI. I've also judged uh, in major award systems for over a decade now and um, here in New Zealand I run a very diverse photography um, business where my work's kind of largely commercial based but I love to also create a lot of portraiture um, and of course my creative gallery work. I'd like to introduce the challenge category um, which was this time, this round, was cultures of the world. So celebrating the customs, the ideas and behaviour of different groups of people from anywhere and everywhere in the world. I love being a part of judging this category and seeing all the fascinating, inspiring diversity that we have in this community. Um, and there were some incredibly beautiful stories um, that made up, made up this category. In New Zealand, uh, we have this word called mana. Um, it's a word describing one's spiritual heart or, or, or power within, um, which many of you have worked into your imagery in this category in particular. So it's been wonderful. Um, let's have a look at some of the work. Here's the top 20 place getters from number 20 to number one. Congratulations, everyone. 
That was very cool. And we're going to load that video right now for you to see cultures of the world. Um, I love what you said about um, seeing the different cultures and how beautiful this category was. It's almost a category that's going to be hard to see go as a challenge category. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is a remarkable image that has won this category. The winner of this category is Erica Talsha. This image is absolutely incredible, Erica, and you can spend a very long time um, really, really looking at this narrative. Um, congratulations. It is a great image, and I absolutely love it. Um, kia ora, Richard. That was absolutely beautiful. You said that absolutely perfectly and so well. And... Um, I love that over almost half of those images in this category were from my culture. <laughs> so, um, you know, to see Mapuana, her cultural portraits from Hawaii, just dominating in that category, and then to see all that beautiful um, New Zealand in there just um, makes me want to cry. I'm homesick, and I get to go home, guys. I actually get to go home. I've been on the waiting list, and I get to go home on May the 4th to New Zealand to see my mom. Yee-hoo! All right, that was, uh, oh, we have one more category. I thought that was all of our categories. And then I remembered we put a wedding category in this year. So uh, we put a wedding category in. We have all of these amazing master judges that are also master wedding photographers. So this would have been um, fun for them, no doubt. And who have I got here? I'm back to Nikki Klosser, and she's going to intro the top 20 for wedding. Thank you so much, Sue. Hi everyone, I'm Nikki Klosser. I'm host of the Portrait System Podcast and I've been a portrait photographer for 10 years now. We also have a challenge category and this time we have wedding portraits included. It was really, really fun to go through these and it, it's awesome because a lot of portrait photographers either have been a wedding photographer at one point or currently are. So it is so wonderful to be able to showcase that work as well. And there were some really, really dynamic wedding portraits submitted this round. Okay, so we've created for you a brief slideshow and we put together the top 20 photos from each category. We're gonna show you the slideshow starting at number 20 all the way up to the winning photo for that particular category. All right, let's get started with the slideshows. Please enjoy and congrats to everyone who is in the top 20 for all of these different categories. And this will be the last category for the top 20. I'm just waiting for that wedding video to load and then we'll show you the top 20. Are you still shooting weddings, Richard? Uh, a small handful. I, um, I like to keep a bit of diversity, but yeah, definitely not how I used to, that's for sure. And is yeah. it something that you feel like, when you say a small handful, do you choose like five or 10? Or is that, you know, if you're shooting portrait, I guess it's seasonal. It's kind of between probably five and 10 that I'll choose now rather than, yeah, I was in the 30s. Yeah, it's um, a lot. Back in the day, but no, not anymore. <laughs> awesome. All right, I have the top 20 of the wedding category.
is our winner. Rachel Owen, you are the winner of the wedding category. Congratulations. All of those category winners are going to get $1,000 and a crystal trophy. We had a look at all of those winners. We rejudged and we have a grand champion to announce. Our grand champion print from our category winners is Faro Yavari. <laughs> Hi, congratulations, Faro. This is an uh, image scored a 94 gold. It is absolutely exquisite. You have won two categories this round. You are our champion, grand champion, and congratulations. I am just loving watching all of your work. You are phenomenal and well-deserved. Would you like to say anything to this, Richard? Uh, just a huge congratulations, Faro. What beautiful work, well done. Um, I'm seeing a lot of your work around the place at the moment and you're doing exceptionally well. So yeah, congratulations. Well deserved. Congratulations, all of you. Congratulations to your top 20. Congratulations to your category winners. I've got a few more things to tell you. As usual, I have a little announcement about the next awards. Um, we have got a new challenge round and it's going to be monochrome. Oh, now monochrome opens some big doors. And we'll have the perfect uh, category description underneath monochrome. As soon as it's open for the next round, we just wanted to tell you monochrome will be the next challenge category. But make sure you read the description because monochrome is not always black and white. And it's always good to challenge the boundaries of monochrome to make sure that you're getting, you know, the judge's attention. I think that's very important. Wedding is going to remain as a permanent category because we have so many people that want to enter their wedding prints. So wedding will stay. And the next round, let's talk about those dates because we announce them and then we call for entries for four weeks and then we announce on the fourth week after that. So May 16, we will open for submissions. May uh, June 15, we close those submissions and we start judging. And then July 15, we announce awards and accreditation. So May 16, we will open for submissions. June 15, uh, we will close it. You have four weeks to get in everything you want to get in, and then we have four weeks to judge them so that we can do your July announcement. Um, a friendly reminder to read all the rules. Um, we do change the rules. We update them. We always mark them. But go back and just read the fine print because you don't want to get all the way into a category to find out you're in the wrong category or maybe you've not read one of, one of the rules and that's very, very important. And aside from that, all of your badges are in your account so you can put them on your social media, you can put them on your website and you can start you know, sharing your incredible success awards. And other than that, thank you so much for getting out of bed early, Richard. <laughs> I love it when it's not daylight <laughs> saving <laughs> and you get to My actually pleasure. be here because I sometimes feel like you do all the hard work on that judging month and then I come in and get to tell um, who all the winners are. And last time I felt bad. <laughs> I was like, you should be here. You're so, you spend so much time doing this. And, you know, I just want to say, you guys don't get to experience this. But we have a private Facebook group with our judges and, you know, when we go through the rounds, it's very active. We've got a lot of communication in there. You've just never met a group of creative people that love doing this more. Like there is nobody in this group that complains about awards time. We activate that group the month before and we say, hey guys, is, is there anybody in or out for this round? You know, anybody too busy? And we get so, just 13 engaged masters. They dive in so fast. They love it. They just want to spend, and they spend hours judging. It's, and they're so lit up by it. Even when they're finished, they're like, give me more. I want more. And it's so incredible to watch because it means that the people that are judging your work are really, really judging your work. And I, I don't even know how to communicate that with more truth because it's so cool to see. And it's just a really cool system and a really neat team. So... Thanks for being part of it. Thanks for entering. Um, get your awards ready because May 16 will call for entries. Thanks, Richard. And I'll see you guys at the end of this month, Tuesday, live. Oh,